TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. EU political director Enrique Mora acknowledges that a revival of the 2015 nuclear agreement with Iran or JCPOA, despite prolonged efforts, is highly unlikely. China and the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia herald a new era of relations after signing comprehensive strategic partnership agreement. Israeli intelligence director at Commander Major General Aaron Khalifa stresses the necessity to bolster the U.S.-Israel alliance. The European Union acknowledges that the failure to revive the 2015 nuclear agreement with Iran to date derives from a lack of political will to do so by the Ayatollah regime in Tehran. Speaking at a panel at the Aspen Security Forum, EU External Action Service Deputy Secretary General Enrique Mora, who spearheaded coordination efforts vis-à-vis -vis Iran to try and revive the so-called JCPOA on behalf of the P5 plus 1, which include the United States, China, Russia, France, Britain plus Germany, further stressed that the current situation does not permit a revival of the deal. The situation now of the nuclear deal is entirely different than it was uh, uh, only six months ago. We cannot uh, detract ourselves from the current situation, first inside Iran, second, uh, a point which is extremely important to the European Union. Iran is, along with North Korea, the only country in the world which is giving weapons to Russia to, in the war of aggression against Ukraine. And then we have the, the nuclear, uh, the GCPOA. Um, conventional wisdom, let's put it that way, for many years, said that uh, we have to encapsulate the nuclear question in order to put aside a huge non-proliferation problem. So GCPOA was the way to encapsulate that problem, to deal with others, regional behavior, uh, in the evolution, internal evolution of the Islamic uh, Republic. Um, we still think in Brussels that that is uh, correct, but at the same time, it's absolutely obvious that this is not the moment to go for the nuclear agreement. Moa continued by insisting that the reason for the delay in the revival of the so-called JCPOA is not exclusively related to Iran's malign behavior, rather it relates predominantly to a lack of political will in Tehran. Nevertheless, Mora seized the opportunity to respond to those who insist that the 2015 nuclear agreement is dead. But it's not just um, because of the situation on the ground. It is. It is not just because of uh, support to Russia. It is. It's uh, fundamentally because the Iranians themselves, they have not taken the decision to go for GCPOA. They have two golden opportunities, one in March, another one in August where we could have, we had, in fact, an, an agreement, but they lack the political will to go for it. And they put a technical question called safeguards before uh, going for GCPOA. So this is the situation right now. And to all those who, says that, who say that GCPOA is a, is a death course, my question is very simple. What, what's the alternative? How can you do? <laughs> what do you want to do with uh, the Iranian nuclear program that, by the way, is, is advancing at a cruise speed? It is important to highlight that the U.S. National Security Council had repeatedly claimed in recent months that it is working on a so-called Plan B alongside its European and Middle Eastern partners. Nevertheless, no information has yet been made available on its essence or progress. Meanwhile, the so-called pivot eastward by the United States, which significantly deprioritized the Middle East and Washington's national security strategy, has created a perception throughout the region that the U.S. is essentially withdrawing, amplifying real concerns about which global power is expected to fill the emerging vacuum. Asked whether Brussels believes Moscow would attempt to fill the void, the Deputy Secretary General of the EU External Action Service stressed 
that China was already sweeping in. Iran has a 25-year uh, treaty with China, who virtually put the Iranian economy in the hands of China. Today, we have, as Mona mentioned, for three days, Xi Jinping is in Riyadh. He's having summits, three summits, with the Arab League, with the Gulf Cooperation Council, and a bilateral one with Saudi Arabia. Uh, no one, no leader in the world has had such a, such a treatment. And at the same time, he's the first and most reliable ally of Iran. This is filling the gap. Acting that diplomacy is filling the gap, not the Russians. <laughs> As mentioned by Mora, Xi Jinping is currently on his second of three days visit to the Saudi capital Riyadh, where he met with leaders of the Arab world, including his prime host, Saudi Crown Prince and Prime Minister Mohammed bin Salman. President Xi, whose country has been actively pursuing deeper relations with the Gulf, heralded a new era in China's relations with the Arab world, and while Washington repeatedly highlights its intentions to reevaluate its relations with Riyadh, coupled with the latter's treatment by Western powers, irrespective of cultural sensitivities, has evidently drawn the Arabian Kingdom to acquiesce to the so-called Eastern Dragon by signing a comprehensive strategic partnership agreement. فإن قمتنا هذه تؤسس لانطلاق تاريخي تاريخي جديد للعلاقة بين الصين والسعودية تهدف لتعميق التعاون مع جمهورية الصين الشعبية في جميع المجالات وإلى التنسيق وجهات النظر حيال القضايا الإقليمية والدولية تعتبر دو مجلس تعاون جمهورية الصين الشعبية شريكا أساسيا مهما لها وقد انعكست ثمار إيجابية لهذه الشراكة على مصالحنا المشتركة وعلى أمن منطقتنا واستقرارها it is important to highlight that the Israeli intelligence community does not believe that the Arab world has given up on the United States and the West at large. Rather, as was mentioned earlier this week by commander of the IDF Intelligence Research and Assessment Division, Brigadier General Amit Sal, because of the U.S. pivot eastward, Gulf nations are essentially hedging to prevent substantive risks. Moreover, during the annual Gazit Institute's winter conference earlier this week, IDF Intelligence Directorate Chief Major General Aaron Khalifa highlighted in his assessment of 2023 that to weather expected instability throughout the world and the region in particular, Israel must further bolster its strategic ties with the United States. <laughs> אני לא אומר את זה בהקשר של האזור, אני קודם כל אומר את זה בהקשר הגלובלי, ובהקשר הזה אני סבור שבנקודת הזמן הזאת הדבר החשוב ביותר לה למדינת ישראל לשנים הקרובות היא המשך וחשיבות הקשרים האסטרטגיים שלה עם ארצות הברית של אמריקה. Israeli National Security Advisor Dr. Eyal Khulata, who also addressed the Gazit Institute's Winter Conference, echoed the need to preserve the ironclad relations with the United States. Moreover, Jerusalem's National Security Advisor, in his assessment for 2023, stressed the necessity to deepen Israel's regional integration. We are in a situation in the Israel, we have not seen all of the issues. And also, we have to say that there is a אני חושב שזה נכון, אני גם שומע את זה, מדברים איתי. אבל יש עוד דברים שמשפיעים על האופן שבו מדינות האזור תופסות את ישראל. ועל התפקיד שלה גם למול האיום האיראני, שהוא משותף לכולם, וגם למול היכולת להתמודד עם האתגרים שמגיעים לאזור, מאקלים ועד פנדמיות ומשברי אנרגיה עתידיים. יש הבנה שמערכת היחסים עם ישראל היא חשובה, שהעוצמות הישראליות רלוונטיות, ומאחורי זה מסתתר הסתדמות מאוד מאוד גדולה. עכשיו, האתגר של כל דרג מדיני, זה נכון לממשלה היוצאת, זה נכון לממשלה הנכנסת, איך מנווטים בתוך הסבך הזה בצורה שמאפשרת למקסם את עולם ההזדמנויות, ודרכם לבנות אסטרטגית קדימה את הצמיחה הישראלית עשור ושניים קדימה, ולחזק עוד יותר את הדברים החזקים בעוצמות הפנימיות שלנו שמאפשרות לנו להיות הנס הזה. 
The Israeli National Security Advisor Dr. Eyal Khulata further highlighted the Iranian and Palestinian arenas as the most explosive issues for 2023, which the next Israeli government must deal with vigilantly. Thank you for watching TV7 Israel News. I would like to highlight that TV7 Israel is a donation-based ministry, and therefore, if you're blessed by our productions, please consider making a financial contribution, which would enable us to sustain our ongoing operations here in Jerusalem. Additionally, I would like to keep encouraging you to pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide, for the peace of Jerusalem and salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Hassan, wishing you a Shabbat Shalom and God willing, we'll see you again on Monday at the same time.